Hello friends, welcome to G-Centric. So in this lecture, we will start studying the reciprocity theorem. Okay, we will study about the reciprocity theorem. Okay, so now what does this theorem state? So basically it says, okay, so L represents for linear, BL represents for bilateral, okay, and P for passive. So in any linear bilateral passive network, the ratio of excitation to response. So what is this excitation? It is nothing but the input. Response, we can call it as also output or vice versa. The ratio of response to excitation is constant. Okay. So even though when the source is interchanged from input to output terminal. Okay. So what does this statement mean is that, okay, you have given the linear bilateral and passive network. In this network, excitation is given, that is input and output, that is current. Both are given. So, what it says, when they are interchanged, so interchanging meaning, this will be, okay, this part will come to LHS and this will be to the RHS. This will take it as V2, already we have taken it as V1. So, this is notation is nothing but when it to denote the interchange of the elements okay so when these sources are or the input or uh, output they are interchanged what it says the ratio of them remains constant so what type of ratio excitation to response or response to excitation so from excitation to response so excitation is v1 divided by response is i2 okay it will be equal to so when it is interchanged this part will be excitation okay so v2 divided by and this will be response okay also you can write it as response to the excitation equal to response to the excitation okay so what this ratio will be it will be always constant even though they are interchanged and this is applicable only for circuits or networks having one independent source Okay, so when two or more independent sources come, we will see how we will apply reciprocity theorem for those circuits. Next, it is not applicable for networks with initial conditions. Okay, that is because it will become non-linear. This is applicable only for linear, bilateral, passive network. So, how to remember this one? Take a uh, graph. Okay. So, draw a straight line through origin. So, this indicates all the parameters mentioned in this circuit. Okay. So, now we will come to the problem. We will apply for that. We will, we have to find I4 current. That is current through the 4 ohm resistor. So, we will take this as the, you know, to learn the basics of the reciprocity theorem and then we will take up the questions. Okay. So now to find the current in I4, uh, sorry, I4 current in the 4 ohm resistor, what we have to do? We have to know the total current in the circuit. So to, to know this total current in the circuit, I total will be equal to reduce the circuit 8 and 4 are in series, series 12 into 6 is in parallel. So you will get 18 and this is in uh, series with 2 ohm. <coughs> So, you will get this as 4 plus 2, 6 amperes. Okay. So, when you get 6 ampere, this is the current I. I total 6 ampere. You can use the current division rule to find the I4. It is nothing but opposite resistor 8, 12, 12 plus 6 is 18 into 6. So, this will be I4 is equal to. So, one minute. Um, so, sorry, this is not I total, right? This is R equivalent. Okay. So, this is R equivalent. How much you will get R equivalent as? Uh, so, this is uh, 12, 12 into 6 divided by 18, 6, 3, 3, 4, 2 in series. So, you will get 6 amp, uh, ohms in parallel. Sorry, total equivalent resistance. Then current I total will be 24 by 6. So, this will be 4 amperes, right? 6, 4s are 24. So, this is 4 amperes. Then using the current division rule, we can find the I4. It is 6 divided by 
12 plus 6 is 18 into 4. 6, 3, then this will comes out to be 4 by 3 amperes. Okay. So, this is across the 4 ohm resistor. Now, using the reciprocity theorem, interchange them, response and excitation. So, this will be 2 ohm as it is. Resistors will be same. Okay. So, this is 6 ohm and here it is 8 ohms, 4 ohm and the voltage source. So, how much is the voltage source? 24 volts. Now, coming to the direction, I4 is downwards, okay. And here, this is the polarity, right. So, it is upward. Polarity plus will go with the arrow head. So, it is upward and there also it is upward and current is downward. So, in this case also, we have to take the current downwards, okay. They both are in opposite. So, now we have to get the same response across I2 ohm if we are applying the reciprocity theorem that is 4 by 3 amperes. So, we will see we will find the total current in this one. So, what is the total current? Before that we have to find R equivalent. So, 2 and 6 divided by 8 plus 12. So, 4 this is 3 by 2, 24, 27 by 2 ohms. So, I total will be equal to 24 divided by 2 upon 27. So, this is 8, 9, 16 by 9 amperes, okay, equal to 16 by 9 amperes, right. So, now we have to find I2 ohms. So, apply the current division rule 6 divided by 8 into 16 by 9. So, this is uh, 4 twos are 4 fours are 2 and this is 2, 3. So, 4 by 3 amperes. So, if you see this and this current, both are same. So, reciprocity theorem is satisfied. Applying, we can apply the reciprocity theorem. So, now this is a simple circuit. So, you are able to solve the easily. But using that reciprocity. If you do not know the reciprocity theorem and if the long network is given, okay. So, it will be difficult to solve. So, now we will see some more questions based on this. So, we will come to this question number 157. So, now we have got two circuits. Alright. So, see here it is 20 volts. Okay. What we have to find? We have to find this I. Find I. Okay. So, we have to find this I current through this branch. Here it is 20 volt and here it is 40 volts. So, it is already seen that because of the reciprocity it has changed. So, we have to find the I. So, there are two methods to find I. One is you can take the ratio of excitation to the response equal to excitation by response. Right. So, this will be this 0 gets cancelled 2 and I will be equal to 8 amperes. So, this is first method. Next, second method, if you see that for 20 volts, it is giving the current of 4 amperes, right. So, now what times multiplier, if I multiply, I will get 40 volts. It is the multiplication of 2. So, this is 40 volts equal to. Similarly, when I multiply it with exc in, in excitation, I have to multiply same thing in the response that is into 2 which will be equal to 8 amperes. Okay. So, here and here you can solve anything both the ways. Alright. So, next we will come to this 158th question. So, coming to this 158th question, we have two circuits. Okay. So, when we have two circuits here, you can see we have two independent sources also. But our reciprocity theorem, it is only applicable for one independent source. So, now when two independent sources are there, we will use superposition theorem, okay. And we will take first 20 volt source as active, okay. So, we will take 20 volt source active. Then this will be shorted, right. So, we have to find this current I, find I, alright. So, when this is active, we will take this current as I1, okay. So, I is due to both 20 plus 30. Now, I1, if you see here, due to 10 volts, you have got 5 amperes of current. So, for 20 volts, how much it will be? 20 into 5 divided by 
10. So you will get it as 10 amperes. I1 is equal to 10 amperes. Next we will short this one and we will keep 30 volt active 30 volt source we will keep it as active. How much you will get when you keep this will be short. Okay, So this will be short and this will be I. This will be I2. Okay, So now if you see here this voltage source is here and this voltage source is here. So I will take this voltage source over here so that we can get the matching. Okay, so On the same side both the voltage sources will be present. Now I will take this as it is. So here it will be 2 amperes. Okay, so this will be network and here it is 5 amperes. Okay, so the direction will be same here. Then we have plus 2 ohms also is there. Plus minus this will be 2 ohms, 5 ohms and this is 10 volts. So now you compare see here this is downwards and it is upwards. Now if I change the polarity here, if I take plus minus, then the polarity of this also should change. It will be I2. Now compare, multiply this with 3 and multiply 2 also with 3. Okay, So this will be 6 amperes, nothing but the current I2. So what will be total current? I1 plus I2, 10 plus 16 which will be equal to 16 amperes. Okay, so next coming to the 159th question, similar way we have got two sources 10 volt and 30 volts. So we will here also we will apply superposition theorem. Okay, so first we will take the 10 volt source active. Okay, so when we take 10 volt source active, this will be short circuit. So due to 5 volts, we have I okay, will just check with the question. Okay, so this is uh, we have got 4 ampere there also. So this is 5 volts. Due to 5 volts, how much current is flowing? 4 ampere. So due to 10 volts, it means multiplication of 2 here and here also 2 we will get I1 is equal to 8 amperes. Right? Next, we will short this one. Okay, so this will be current I2. Okay, now we have to find the current due to this one. I will interchange this circuit. Here I will get network. Then we have 2 amperes. Here it is 4 ampere. Okay, so it is upward and here also it is upward. So in this case also what it should be? When you interchange here it is upward, here it is downward. Okay, So when it is upward and downward, this will be how much? 5 volts. Okay, So what we have to do? We have to take a negative sign when they are in opposite direction. right? So in this case, if I multiply into 6, right? here also if I multiply into 6, I will keep in mind we have to take negative current you will get I2 is equal to minus 12. So when it is minus 12, I will be I1 plus I2 then minus 4 amperes. Okay. So we will see one more problem based on this and we will end the reciprocity theorem. So coming to question number 160. So you see that now there is no similarity between these two. We have introduced one ohm resistor. Okay, so to solve this problem, if you see from this side, okay, from this way it is similar to this one, okay, we will ignore this one ohm resistor. So what it will be? We can take it as not an equivalent, we have to find IN, then RN and then the here it is the load that is one ohm. So what it will be basically this current, short circuit current. So if we find that one. It will be easy, we can replace this circuit with this. So to replace this Norton circuit from this one, what we have to do? We have to short this circuit, use the reciprocity theorem. right? So I will take uh, 10 volt source over that side. Okay, So that the, both the sources are on LHS, sorry RHS. 
right so this is 2 amperes and here we have got source 10 volts 5 amps okay so here it is 5 ampere now to this circuit we have okay here is a current i and we have 30 volts okay so we have to find this i so to get 30 i have to multiply with 3 here also i have to multiply with 3 so this is nothing but short circuit current 6 amperes so i have got 6 amperes right now i have to find rn so rn i can find from the first circuit it is nothing but voltage upon current that is 2 ohms right we will get 2 ohms so now we can find IAC current that is through 1 ohm resistor so I 1 ohm is nothing but we can apply current division rule 2 divided by 3 into 6 so you will get 4 amperes ok so we easily we have got current ok from 1 ohm resistor so just reduce it to Norton model so this completes the reciprocity theorem so in the next lecture we will see Milliman's theorem ok and then telegance and compensation theorem then this unit is completed ok thank you